right guys I hope you can see this I'm currently um, about to take apart the hang time motor from the wicked freedom and uh, actually I have the wicked cruiser and um, I hope this isn't too quiet or too loud but uh, I took the wheel off I took all the washers off everything torque arms and um, I didn't make a video of that there's plenty of other videos online about that but uh, I just want to make a video on how to repair a loose magnet in your geared hub motor. And this is a very large geared hub motor, probably one of the biggest. So the magnets inside are very powerful. And uh, in case you get some value from this video, that's great. But I wanted to start off with just the wheel out here. Oh, hey. How's it going? Hey, got a visitor. And uh, I'm just moving into this uh, this house. I'm getting everything set up, so I got my computer set up. That is not a computer from the 90s, by the way. That's just the case. I have modern hardware in there. But anyways, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to know exactly how this is put together and put it back the same way. You like sniffing markers? I want to put it back together the same way. And so what I'm going to do is just make a line. with my permanent marker to know, make a couple lines, to know exactly, actually, you know, I shouldn't have done that because then I don't know which lines which, to know exactly where this was placed beforehand and how to put it back together. And now I'm going to start taking apart these little um, Allen uh, bolts and uh, we'll see where we go from there. All right, so I took off all these little bolts and what I did was I just took a little screwdriver, slowly went around and, until this came up. And now it is loose. And we can lift it up, hopefully. Got to be careful for this cable. Slowly bring it up. the whole motor comes up oh that's not good so what happened was I lifted the whole thing up do not lose that washer guys I don't know if you see it I'm happy I'm taking this video because this is both for you as it is for me because I want to know exactly how I took this apart so I can put it back together perfect so I'm gonna get a little cardboard to set this down and we'll continue Something else I want to show you guys is, um, <clears throat> let's flip this over. By the way, this is a milk crate. It's a great little surface to work on because the axle can go right through one of the holes. You can set this down. But one thing I wanted to show you is uh, I want to get this off. As you can see, all this free wheel is very rusted. Uh, it was kept out in the elements. And I could easily clean this off, but I actually want to upgrade this to something bigger. So we're upgrading this, which I believe is a 14 to 28 tooth freewheel. So this is a 28 teeth tooth freewheel. This is 14 to this. They call this the mega range freewheel, right? Not only is it rust free, it's brand new. This is 34 teeth and this is 11. So it'll give me a lower gear than this and a higher gear than this, depending on which way you see it. Higher as in easier to pedal at top speed without ghost pedaling and with this bike this is necessary because this bike goes fast it'll easily throttle on its own to anywhere between 36 to 38 miles an hour and ghost pedaling is going to be much easier on this bike than my aerial rider kepler which is a little bit slower but the lower gear is good just as almost like an emergency gear for really big hill climbs like something really steep or if your power goes out you can easily pedal a heavy bike, which is kind of cool. Honestly, I don't plan on using this much because of the power of this motor. I'll mostly be using these gears. But what's interesting is I can take off the axle and now my freewheel tool actually fits because before it only, it, it got stuck over the axle. I couldn't fit it in, but now we're good. So quick trick, if you don't want to buy some kind of extra long version of this to swap out the freewheel, you can just take out the motor, which I know is a big pain in the ass, and you can remove that. All right, guys, so here's the inside of the hang tie 
Wicked Freedom slash Cruiser motor. If you see, there's a little bit of grease right there. That's obviously not on the gears. <clears throat> Maybe it was pushed out a little bit. Uh, this bike only has a hundred, about 140,000 miles, 150 somewhere on there. Excuse me, 140,000, 140 miles on it. Bruh. Car talk, guys. Sorry, 140 miles on it. And so, what I'm gonna do? I did buy new grease to put in here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna put new grease in because this grease is pretty good. There's plenty of grease in there. What I'm gonna do is just kind of scoop out the edges and smear it into the gears. And, uh, and that should be good enough. As long as there's grease in the gears, it's not old grease. This is a newish bike. It was actually purchased back in January. Uh, I'm just gonna smear that into the gears of here and the actual, um, the, other, the other smaller gears, the metal reinforced ones, and uh, I think that should be good enough. I'm not gonna clean this out and put new grease on. And there it is, guys. The new freewheel is on. Again, this, it doesn't have to be torqued down because your legs while pedaling will actually twist it tighter and tighter and it'll be torqued down plenty. Um, but it's really simple to change this. You get yourself a freewheel tool. This is like nine, ten dollars on Amazon. Stick that in there. Use a big old breaker bar wrench. Turn it open. It'll spin right open. You can take it off easily. Put the new one on and do the opposite. Tighten it down. Honestly, you don't even need this to put it back on, just to take it off. Spin it on by hand. I tightened it up a little bit more afterwards, but when you pedal, it's going to tighten this up by itself, and this is going nowhere. All right, guys, so I'm here with my milk crate, and I switched the orientation so I have a little bit more space, a little bit better lighting from the ceiling light, but definitely put some cardboard down and, and a Simba Lion King Pumba blanket, specifically this blanket. It's important when you're doing something dirty and you obviously have a carpet underneath or a rug, you don't want to get your stuff dirty. And the reason I'm doing it in this room is because I'm lazy and I didn't want to prepare the correct work environment. I wanted to get this done this weekend and I'm moving into this new house. We're arranging stuff and whatnot. So I don't really have time to do this. This is a small room. It's doubling as my office and my uh, second bedroom actually but um it's a tiny work area but it works but anyways yeah protect your uh surroundings because the grease in there and whatnot it's kind of a dirty job but let's see what this motor looks like we're going to put it on this milk crate the axle will go right through here and that way the motor will not go anywhere while we work on it all right i'm using my flash to uh get this video give you guys a better look at this but here is the hang tie motor the gears inside there see that they are metal reinforced i know a lot of people say oh they're metal gears thinking they're completely metal no they are metal reinforced gears and that's both actually a good thing and a bad thing the bad thing believe it or not is that now these nylon gears um the the gears that are fully nylon they are designed to be a failure point if i'm not mistaken and what i mean by that is let's say the motor is getting hot and um the motor is not designed for that stress and it needs to it's going to fail somewhere i would rather the gears fail right if the if it's hot if the motor something's wrong with it there's too much power going through i would rather the gears fail and it start to slip than the motor actually failing and me having to repair that or even worse the well maybe not worse the housing of the motor which is expensive to get relaced and whatnot and so this is kind of like a car tie rod if you guys are familiar with tie rods they're these really thin um bars that connect your steering to the wheels in your car and those are thin by design because by design you'd rather have the tie rods fail then something more major fail and have it be more expensive. So durability isn't always the best thing. However, with this motor it getting so much power, you probably need a little bit of metal reinforcement because the gears would just potentially melt. And I'm sure you can run a lot of power through this motor, probably a 72 volt system. You could probably run 3000 watts through this motor because this motor is actually bigger than the G62 or G63 that the Aerial Rider Kepler has. 
and the uh, Aerial Rider X Class and the Grizzlies and whatnot. This is a bigger motor, right? Larger diameter, more magnets. It can take more heat, it could take more power. And people have run 2,000, 3,000, uh, maybe more watts through those motors. So this one can probably take even more power. So when it comes to durability, I think this motor probably is better. Obviously, this one is a fluke. It was left out in the elements, and uh, one of the motors, one of the magnets got loose. I don't think it's the motor's fault. I don't know if it's the manufacturer's fault. I don't know, but we're going to fix it. All right, guys. So what we have here is a gear puller that I'm going to use to remove this set of gears, and later the uh whatever this is called the stator from all the the magnets i don't know exactly how motors are but that's going to require a lot of force and this will help a lot what it does is clamp on the edges i just twist this and it pulls this up and i got this idea from another youtube channel called the how to dad i believe where he takes apart a geared hub motor i got this idea from him so thank you very much from that shout out to you a link a uh i'll make a link to that video in a um a card in this one so you guys can take a look at that if you want another example of how to take apart one of these geared hub motors so again check it out guys this pushes into the axle this tool you just kind of twist it with a, uh, a wrench use whatever kind of wrench you want this pushes into the axle and it pulls this away from the actual motor so now it's loose so i'm twisting it and it's going up further and further. So that's a really useful tool, guys. And what I did, if you guys don't have this, I bought a set from Amazon that's like well, three inch to eight inch size. It's actually not even the biggest one I'm not using. Next up, we're gonna be taking off this little guy, this clip. Again, guys, do not lose any of these pieces. Very important. Autofocus, this goes right in there. And again, this video is just as much for me as it is for you, because it's important to remember how to put these motors together, back together. And the best way to do that is to film yourself taking it apart or at least take pictures. So we're gonna set that down right over there. And then there's a little C clip in here that I'm gonna have to figure out how to take off. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so I took the C clip off and that was a real pain. I didn't get that on camera. What I did was I just took two pliers, grabbed the very the little wider sides of that c-clip and i just kind of spread them apart and shimmed it off the axle it's much better if you have a c-clip tool what you could always do is just do what you did or do what i did with these is just buy them on amazon or home depot and return them later if you're not going to use them regularly but if you have c-clip tools kicking around that's going to come in very handy for this all right guys and after all that you could just simply take off these little screws that were here i already took them off and this will come right off all right so there is yet another c-clip right in there and i cannot I'm not, i don't even feel like trying to get access to that and bending it and messing it up um, i mean i could i guess i could try i don't want to try i mean home depot is just 10 minutes down the road so what i think i'll do is run down get some c-clip tools and just return them afterwards but before that let's flip this motor over let's see if i can find those loose magnets or maybe it's just one magnet let's find out all right so i can pull this uh cover up a little bit and we can take a look at each individual magnet separately what i'm going to do is just push down on it gently and see if it moves but what's interesting i don't know if this is has anything to do with anything but there's some scuffing right here uh, I'm pretty sure that has something to do with the manufacturing. I don't think that has anything to do with how the motor is operating. Otherwise, it'd be much worse. But upon visual inspection, you can't really tell anything is wrong. Push that one. So I'm going to just go around all of them and let you guys know what I find. All right, guys. So I was going around pushing down on all of them, and this one managed to move down which means that's the loose one, right? So what I'm gonna do is mark it, mark the orientation just with a little permanent marker just to make sure I know which side is up and down and whatnot. And that way we know which magnet it is and which orientation to put it back. But what you do is you just go around all of them, push down on them, see which ones move, mark them down. That way you already know which ones you have to repair. 
All right, guys, so <clears throat> found a bunch of loose magnets. I marked them all down. What you do is just push down. If it moves, it's loose, and you give it a good push, right? Um, because if it's if you push gently, it might be loose, and you might not know that it's loose, and you put it all back together, and you realize it's still making that noise. Give it a firm push. It's going to move. That's the one to replace. So I marked all of them down. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight loose motors in the uh, loose excuse me loose motors loose magnets so those are going to be the ones that need replacing again a little tube of um high heat jb weld very cheap to fix obviously it just takes a little bit of work that's why i was okay with buying this bike even though i didn't know this was the problem i'm glad it was this and not some expensive electronic component that i have to fix but What's interesting is that this motor eventually would self-destruct itself if I kept running it. And you can already see there's some scraping on the edges of these parts from those magnets just kind of rattling around. I don't know if that's from that or not, but we'll get a better look at it later um, once we take this apart. But right now, it's time to go to Home Depot and get some C-Clip tools. All right, guys. So I got the C-Clip tool. And I was able to remove this larger clip, which was a, still a huge pain. I still needed some pliers and these C-clip tools. These suck. I'm definitely going to return these. I was going to return them anyways, but see if you can guys get some better ones because you're going to have to go out to split this open. And it's weird using pliers this way instead of this way. I don't know if I'm using them wrong. I probably was. Oh, well. Anyways. So, something else to note. When you're pulling, if, if you're ever going to do this with a big hub motor, I'm glad I got this gigantic gear puller. This is the 8-inch huge gear puller. And if you see, even that, the threading, it barely has any threading. I already started pulling this up. All right, started separating it a tiny bit. This is, even this is just big enough to get this job. So I'm glad I got the different sizes. I don't know what size I would need. And so I just got the biggest one. And so we're going to pull this up. And here's where you want to be careful because the magnets are pulling this whole kind of casing down with a lot of force, a lot of force, right? So this, once it separates, make sure you keep them separated because those magnets, if, it, if your fingers are anywhere near that area, and this thing slams down and your fingers are there, you're going to the hospital. Your fingers are getting crushed. I guarantee it, right? So make sure once this is separated, you completely remove it and place it somewhere where no metal anything is going to fly into it. So some clean environment, I'm going to make a space for it. Uh, but that's really important, guys. I just want to reiterate, be safe. Um, Wear gloves if you do this, just in case something bad happens. Uh, but yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so that was a very tense moment. I was uh, ratcheting, 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 and I got to the point where it felt like there was a lot of resistance. I thought I was going to break this. Like, did I take all the clips off? Did I remove everything that's holding it together? Nope, that was just the magnets, the crazy strong magnets holding this thing together. So little by little... I used my giant gear puller to pull off the magnets from this. And then we can get a closer look at what we're dealing with. So check this out. So there's a little bit of scraping right there from the loose magnet. And it looked like it chipped a piece of the motor. As you can see, a little bit of damage from the scraping. Not Nothing major, just a little bit. But, <clears throat> you know... Just know that if you kept using this motor with those loose magnets, all of this would get damaged, right? I don't even know what this is. Probably from something that I removed. <clears throat> Make sure you guys, uh, you know, don't get any crap in your motor, right? But, uh, yeah, this is the hang time motor inside. So this side is fine. doesn't need any kind of work. This is totally fine. And I put all the magnets... The magnet side right here <clears throat> and as you can see I put lines dictating where all the magnets are which ones are loose which ones I need to re-glue you can see some of the 
residual glue from uh, the manufacturing. This looks like it's some of it's kind of dried up. And uh, this is something else you have to be careful with because these magnets, let's say one of them on latches, it's going to fly to the other side. And if your fingers are in between, that's going to hurt, right? These are very, very strong magnets. So again, be very careful when doing this. What I'm going to do is uh, probably take them off, take all the loose ones off one at a time, separate them, make sure there's no, they're not going to slam together to something else metal or whatever. Clean it up. Um, make sure there's no residual residue. Clean where it's mounted. And then one by one, re-glue them with a uh, high temperature JB Weld. And um, I might even put, uh, I don't know if it'd be worth clamping them down even with a small clamp. I don't have that many small little clamps, but we'll see if I need to do that. I don't know. I'll let you guys know. Okay, so I took out one magnet, and as you could tell, there is absolutely no adhesive behind that one magnet whatsoever. Here's the back of the magnet. Look at that. Clean. There's nothing. This is the front. And uh, my mat, my strategy for taking these off is I tilt one up a little bit and get it shimmed out a little bit uh, above the others. And then I can grab onto it with these pliers and pull it out. And what I'm going to do is put each and every one of these individually in a separate mason jar. I have a lot of mason jars. And that way I know for sure it's not going to go anywhere. Nothing's going to get near it. It's not going to connect to any of these other ones. Because these are extremely strong magnets. Uh, I don't want to get them separated because then it's going to be hard to separate them. I don't want to connect them because then it would be hard to separate them. But yeah. We'll take all of these out, guys, and uh, start the uh, cleaning process. All right, so just to show you guys that I'm being, how careful I'm being. I already removed some of these magnets. If you could tell, there's there's no adhesive at all. It's crazy. This must have been a um, some kind of a manufacturing, uh, Jesus, some kind of a manufacturing defect in um, in this. In this motor, so um, so yeah, we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes. There's there's no glue at all behind these magnets, but check this out. Here's how I'm getting them out one at a time. So so if you can tell how strong that metal, look how fast that piece of metal snaps to that. Anyways, we push this little screwdriver, shimmy it behind, oh, shimmy it behind the loose magnet, just a smidge. Okay, maybe like a centimeter down, and then I lever it up, because it's still stuck to the outside uh, of the casing, and then I take some pliers, grab the top, and that, and it slides right out, and there's the magnet. See? No adhesive on this also. It's ridiculous. I'm glad I'm doing this. This motor's going to be bulletproof after I glue everything. All right, guys, so we're going to be mixing up some high heat epoxy. A little bit right here. Got some on a plate. We're just going to mix some up. Hopefully, this is enough. I'll show you guys how much I put on each magnet, and we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, so there is the magnet with a little bit of epoxy. See the line right there? That's going to line up with... Oh, where is it? The line right there. I know you guys can't see it, but we'll see if hopefully not too much is squeezed out. If it is, then I got to put less, but we'll start with that much. Again, guys, just looking at these motors, I'm cleaning them with rubbing alcohol and then putting some, uh, some of this epoxy on. But if you look, they're all scraped up from shifting side to side from when they were loose. And that's, you know, obviously a clear indicator that uh, they were loose for who knows how long, but I'm really happy I'm fixing this. All right, guys, so I got all the magnets <clears throat> JB welded on there, right? Looks nice. And what else I did, I had some extra JB weld that I mixed up, and I stuffed it in all the nooks and crannies of the corners 
of where the motors sit. And my thought process behind that is if I can get a nice kind of um, framing um, for the magnets of J dried JB Weld, it'll just hold them in really tight, really well. So there's magnets and there's JB Weld in between the magnets of the ones that I didn't fix and in between and underneath of the ones I did fix. Um, so we'll see what happened. That could be a bad idea because we'll, I mean, we'll find out. I'll be the guinea pig because there's a potential that the JB Weld would not react well to whatever adhesive was already used on the magnets that I did not repair. And so time will tell on if this repair holds up, but the magnets that I did repair, man, those things are not going anywhere. Like, as you could tell, there was no glue before when I removed the magnets, and now there's plenty of glue. Not so much that it's like, you know, they're bulging out and it's misshapen and it's not going to work correctly, but there's plenty of glue. So I have high hopes for this uh, JB Weld. And uh, if I did replace all the glue with this, I'm thinking I could probably easily run 72 volts and multiple kilowatts through this motor, probably four or 5,000 watts for two reasons. Number one, now I have a great glue holding the magnets in. And number two, those are steel reinforced nylon gears that I'm using, right? And I know aftermarket gears you can even buy that are completely metal. So this motor will be, hand be able to handle probably a little bit more heat. And uh, we're gonna let this cure I think for 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. I'm not exactly sure what it says in terms of cure time. Um, let's see. Of course, I, I ripped it where it where it says how much to cure. Of course I did. All right, guys. So the cure time is 24 hours for this high heat epoxy so what we'll do is we'll let this sit and then put it back together tomorrow night and monday we're going to test it out i want to show you guys something so this is the bike as i got it as you guys know there's a lot of rust on it but look at this that is salt from the road that's still stuck to there so this bike was probably driven well into the winter maybe through the snow stored outside and then immediately exposed uh, the motor was immediate, immediately exposed to its own heat. So the transition probably from the extreme cold to the heat of the motor caused the adhesive to loosen up and the um, magnets to detach from the motor. But look at this. This is crazy. I'm taking off the fender just because I like my bikes without it. I think it looks cool. But um, yeah, interesting. All right, guys. It is day two of our build. We have our quality control inspector here. How's it going? How's the, how's the motor looking? Does it look good? She doesn't care. And we're gonna be putting this motor back together. Um, <clears throat> the glue, the JB Weld has cured by now and um, I think it's safe to put on back to this motor. So let's see how that goes. I, inst I intend to use the, um, the gear puller Got the gear puller right here, this giant one, to safely lower it back onto the motor because otherwise it slams shut with so much force that um, I just don't like it. I think it's risky unnecessarily. Something could crack. Uh, if your fingers are anywhere near it, you're going to the hospital. They're, they're going to be smashed. So, you know, those magnets are really strong. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've seen people online just let it smash down because of the magnets. I don't want to do that. I'm going to try and do it nice and slow and safe. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys. So remember how I said I would use this uh, gear puller? Yeah, that didn't really work out too well. I was frustrated. Things kept moving and kept getting off center. So I just raw dogged it and used my hands and slowly but carefully lowered it down until click pulled itself into place. Just making sure my fingers are out of the way. I held it by its sides. Very important. Clicked it right into place and... If you spin everything, nice and quiet. There's no rubbing with any of the magnets. Although, hopefully that doesn't change uh, later on once there's power through, but everything spins light nicely. And uh, yeah, let's continue on. We're gonna put all the, uh, the C-clips on, 
the gears, the screws, all that, all that jazz. All right, guys. So we just put the um, the gears back on the um, whatever kind of gears they're called. I can't remember planetary, whatever sun gears. But uh, anyways, the little notch of the little like metal piece that sticks out of the axle. You put that in and the gears slide right on top of that and that makes sure this goes nowhere and you kind of tap that in lightly put a piece of wood down a little hammer tap it around make sure it's seated down firmly cleaned everything up so now we're going to put everything back into the wheel and the hardest part is over guys all right guys so we got the top back on we're going to put the screws in here notice the line that i made from before so everything is aligned and if I turn the axle, I'm just going to use this to turn it. Turns in there nicely, going the other way, very little resistance, going backwards, a little bit of resistance, but nothing out of the ordinary. It just feels like a, like a motor should feel. So I'm going to put these screws back in, put the disc back on, put the wheel back in and hopefully test ride is okay. Something else I want to add is that make sure you put blue Loctite on all of these because these are really important that they stay in. Very important, as you might uh, guess. So get yourself some blue Loctite, maybe even red, to make sure these never come out. And remember guys, when you are tightening these bolts, make sure you go across. So tighten this one, 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 and so on and so forth. And that way this won't be off center it won't be bent or crooked in any kind of way and the torque spec for these uh these bolts it's actually not a number it's a, a letter combinations r e a l tight real tight all right Tor tighten these down real tight same thing with the uh the brake discs